When is a shotgun microphone not a true shotgun microphone? Hi, thanks for dropping in and uh, if you like my video, please subscribe. Now, the reason I'm making this video is I've had emails, quite a few, saying something about the, uh, the shotgun that I'm currently using, which is the T-Bone uh, EM9900, uh, asking if it's a real shotgun, if it's a true shotgun. Now, I think what people mean by that is, um, is it like the newer shotgun with the capsule at the top? Um, so I got a bit curious about this thing and had a good look. Now, first of all, I looked down there and uh, I couldn't see anything. Um, the grill is too thick for me to be able to see anything down there, so I couldn't see. So I had a brainwave and the brainwave was to get a torch and shine this torch in through the interference tubes and very curious on one side I could see the light on the other side I couldn't see the light so I thought that's a bit strange and then had another look turned my light up and had another close look and found that actually inside the interference tube of the EM9900 there is like a, a, a cover there's a a rolled up like a piece of card or something put in there which is blocking one side and only allowing us like a small amount of the interference tube to come in through the other side so the little brain here got working thinking well this is actually working like a shotgun microphone it definitely picks up from the front but what's happening on the sides because uh, surely having one side blocked and one side partially open is going to affect it so I thought I'd give it a go so here's the results so this is the sound of the microphone from the front. Now I'm going to just check to see which side is the open side. Okay, the open side is this side. This side is actually blocked, although there is an interference tube there. So you would suspect that maybe this side is going to sound different to this side, which is a bit uh, curious. So let's just try that out. This is the blocked side of the microphone. So this is the sound of the side that's blocked. Over this, we've got, we've got an interference tube that coming down the side here, so you'd, you'd think that it was an interference tube, but in fact, on the inside, it has been blocked. So this is the sound from one side. Now, I'm quickly going to go round. This is the sound of the other side. This is the side which is partially open. Again, we've got the interference tube, but inside, there's only a slit going down the middle of the interference tube. So this is the sound from the other side, which is open. So this is the open side. This is the closed side. Now there might be a very slight difference because there is a difference uh, in inside. So we're back to the front again. Um, so that got me thinking, oh, is it really a shotgun microphone? It is working like a shotgun mic. So I took it outside and I pointed it at a bird, picked up the bird beautifully, pointed it away, the bird faded away. So it is acting like a shotgun microphone, but it's not even in the way that it rejects. So it got me thinking, what's the best way to use this microphone? Because surely if one side is picking up a little bit more than the other side, it's not quite even in the way it rejects. It might make sense, for instance, if you're uh, by a road or a noisy, you've got something noisy on one side, to point the open side the other way. So then I came to this conclusion. Maybe it's better to point the open side downwards at the floor so the closed side is facing the sky in case airplanes come over and the two closed side the closed bits are facing left and right and that therefore you're going to get hopefully a reasonably even rejection over the sides and the top with the bottom facing the ground so this is now the dead side this is talking into the top of the t-bone i'm going to keep talking as i turn it so this is the top of the T-bone, I'm coming round now to the side of the T-bone and this is the blocked side and now I'm going round to the other side, this is the bottom of the T-bone. Now I'm suspecting that the rejection on these three sides is going to be the best part. Now I'm going to go a little bit further, I'm back to now the top but I'm going to go the other way and now I'm facing the open section. So that section might be slightly more lively than um, the other sides. So, just as an experiment, they are. Now, the thing is, is if you're using a T-Bone EM9900 as a shotgun microphone, it again might be better to put the blocked side upwards and the dead side, the, the sides without the interference tubes, left and right, then the one that's open is facing the ground. 
Now to give you a clue, just to check, if you're looking at the top of the T-bone, if you've got one, uh, the open side on mine is the left, oh, hold it away, is the left hand side. So um, if you're looking down from the top, the open side is the left hand side. So if I point the microphone at the camera, I'm gonna talk really loud. The, the open side is this side. So I would point that down, leave that interference tube facing upwards because it's blocked and then these sides are blocked anyway. So uh, just quite interesting looking at the EM9900 and hopefully that answers some of the questions that people have been asking me, is this a true shotgun microphone? As far as I'm concerned, it, it, it is like a, a shotgun microphone. It behaves like one. It certainly has very low noise. It's very, very, very good in that respect. Um, but the curious thing is now I've had a look I can see one side is open, one side is blocked. So we've got the potential of uh, maybe blotting out a little bit more noise just by getting the angle of the microphone right. If you like my videos, please subscribe. Even better, hit the bell and uh, you'll get a notification next time I make a video. Cheers for now. Yeah.